Well, as you can all see, we've actually been sitting in a car park of Castellina in Chianti and never managed to get out because we've just had this awful storm, torrential rain and no umbrella. Um, I had one, can't find it and nothing else to cover ourselves with and as you can see we can't see a thing so unfortunately due to time management today with our travels we've had to just get in the car and move on to the next stop and hope for the best and hope that the storm has passed and when we get there is a little bit brighter we can always come back this way another time right David exactly Clement's weather you know exactly what's the use of not being able to see all the beautiful vineyards and everything so the next town is not far from here in fact and is another beautiful town for vineyards so hopefully when we get there if it's just a little bit brighter um, we'll be able to see something fingers crossed the sun has started to break through and we're back in the next area which is Baberino Tavernelli which again is still always Chianti and finally because the clouds are lifting we are back in beautiful vineyard country and the road signs oh look at this the road signs brilliant greens uh, are dozens and dozens and dozens of names of castelli or castles because you just have umpteen wine castles of course around here look at these beautiful vineyards for as far as the eye can see under a very gray sky but at least the rain has dissipated a little maybe not gone totally but look at these beautiful beautiful greens and silver lining the car has had a wonderful wash down <laughs> after being very very dusty from white dirt roads so at least we have cleaner a cleaner car cleaner windows sorry about the raindrops that you're looking through so let's see what Barberino Tadavarnelli has in store for us We have just stopped um, in a little village on the way to Certal Donau. Every time the rain stops or we get a break, I'm trying to jump out of the car and just get some little photos and a little, some little snapshots for you all of the beautiful surrounds. This, we've just bypassed things that are even multiplied by a hundred in their beauty and their, you know, castles and wine villas and things. but each time unfortunately the road was too dangerous for us to stop or it was pouring with rain so i've done my very best it i said to david sometimes you're just not in the right place at the right time are you for weather or for for things and google maps also sent us up a few wrong roads so now we need to head start heading back west towards home to be home in time today for an appointment but we will certainly be back this way and as you can see it's still stunning under any sky. just left Fiano and on the road to Cataldo and this is some of the prettiest I just said to David really some of the prettiest scenery we've driven through um, in quite a while it's 
really spectacular. Mm, yeah. Just a patchwork of everything. Vineyards and orchards. Yes, and can you imagine under a bright blue Tuscan sky, those beautiful, really China blue skies we get? At the moment, it's grey and it's just so beautiful. So I can't even imagine it looking in any better. Yes, I'm puffing and panting. I've just walked all the way from way down in the town down there up to almost the top of Cetardo. We're in Vicolo del Osteria. I'm hoping there's a cafe right here because we are desperate for one. So let's go and see. Beautiful medieval um, town right up on top of the hill with a bit bigger, bit of a long walk. For those of you that have been to like Monte Pulciano and places like that, you know when you leave your car down the bottom and walk up, that kind of thing. This looks very pretty. Let's see what there is. Oh, gorgeous. Oh, it's beautiful. Gorgeous. Oh, so pretty. The little garden. Oh, I used to be in that. I used to be in that book there when I. I had it in. I was in that book when I had my place in France. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so that statue we saw was that way, but I saw more cafes up that way. Mm -hmm. So let's venture that. This is a restaurant, which we may not want a full restaurant, but it looks beautiful. Yeah. So we're just at a higher part again now of the village. And, oh, it looks gorgeous. Look at these beautiful streets, all these amazing places. Lovely restaurants, cafes. Oh, and look at that. Oh, lots to discover here. right on top of Certaldo now and I'm just walking up to the the very highest point because I can see some apart from those beautiful blazons and crests and things in ceramic which are really stunning I haven't seen a lot in ceramic like that before I can also see that these walls in this beautiful lodger are full of beautiful old artworks that are incredibly bright in colour. Aren't they beautiful, David? All the beautiful crests at the top. Look at this line at the end. Isn't that beautiful? Obviously over the centuries much has been lost, but the little bits that are here are really quite beautiful. <laughs> oh, there's someone taking a photo or a film. <laughs> and look at that view right down. So we were sat just here at this first little osteria. That's a beautiful balcony they have there. And there's some sort of modern artworks here and there dotted through town as well. Oh, and there's another one of those very modern artworks, which is joined with all these wonderful... I was just saying, David, yeah. all these incredible blazons that um, and crests in ceramic, yes. but in ceramic, ceramic yeah. which you don't see that much. They're normally yeah. in stone. Look at these. They're incredible. Detail, I know. They're awesome. Mm. Really beautiful. Chataldo is definitely worth the visit. I saw it in my searches when I was home searching, but we couldn't find anything within our price range. But I thought it looked beautiful and I think I was right. And it's funny because it's one of those places that you don't hear a lot of people talk about. But once again, another gem that I think many people don't actually know about when they're on the tourist route, so to speak. So let's go and discover a little bit more. Yet another little 
indentation, if you like, or piazza, I suppose. Um, here we go. Piazza San Jacopo e Filippo. The back of that building up there is awfully tall. That's incredible. And this would be the entry to the church. But again, one of these ultra, ultra modern sculptures. There are a lot of art roads here. This is similar to what they do in Patchouli, as you've seen before. So this is the Chiesa San Jacopo e Filippo from the 13th century, a very old one. And it has an Urna di Biata Giulia. Ah, oh, there you go, Giulia. It has an urn from the Blessed Giulia. And the Tomba di Giacomo Boccaccio, or Giovanni Boccaccio, sorry. Pretty, isn't it? Really, really lovely. We're really enjoying it. Bit of a whirlwind tour, but oh, another cute little place here. Which is closed, but it's really beautiful. Gosh, gorgeous buildings, aren't they, David? Really lovely buildings. <laughs> a little tiny closed market which has lots of tables and chairs. I'd say they've had a festa or something in here, but it's a walled little wall piazza again with two rather modern sculptures once again and far-reaching views out beyond this is a museum it's called Museo del Chiodo but it's actually of ceramic arts such a shame we don't have time to visit a lot but I'll just show you the front here it's very sweet and there's just a few pieces on show I'm sure you can pick up some beautiful pieces here they have a store inside that one's quite lovely with the elephant ah. story of the artist this is just coming back out of the museum it has this beautiful interior courtyard little spot for eating and drinking there obviously and a gorgeous garden with a well and a very very beautiful tree of some sort I was looking it's not a lime I'm trying to work out those flowers a ristorante il castello which is closed and look at this beautiful Oh, I love those light street lights. Look at these beautiful altars on the walls. Again, in ceramics. So it's obviously the thing here at Chatal that we've noticed a lot of things are actually in ceramic. looks like a ver another really pretty place to eat and David just noticed that they have a net to collect all the things that fall from the tree all the leaves and everything but he said it looks like it's just about to collapse I hope it's not like one of those snow drops you know sometimes you see snow all of a sudden collapse off a roof on someone's head remind me never to sit at that table just there <laughs> but it's gorgeous all the same let's walk down here a little bit further These are like the lovely big old-fashioned torches standing up on the walls. Oh, yeah. See the forged? Oh, look at that through that restaurant. Isn't that pretty? An arched lodger. Ah, this looks awesome, this restaurant. Oh, I think we need to come back and spend some time in Certaldo. The Messer Boccaccio. It's mm. Mr. Boccaccio's place. <laughs> Messer, that's what you used to call them in old language. I think it's probably almost like a derivative of seeing monsieur in French, and that's like a quite an old looking artisan piece there. Gorgeous. 
Well, that was a whistle stop tour, as they say. And now we're walking back down to the lower part of town where the car park is. We've, from what we understood, when you see ZTL in um, signs in Italy, it normally means that it's a special zone for local traffic only. In other words, people that are residents or post people, deliveries, deliveries and things like that. So you don't want to risk that because you will, you can get a really hefty fine. So we have therefore left the car down the bottom and have climbed this big hill, as I said earlier on. And now we're just going down, it's a lot easier, isn't it? <laughs> going back down to find the car and then head off back home to Kiani today. And then you'll see what we actually came home with because we've come home with something very special that we got from the lovely Kel and Jess in Stimiliano. And those people only have the very loveliest of things. So <laughs> you'll see what we came home with. Maybe next episode, who knows? I'm not sure. David and I are just doing a little sunset walk. These are the hills below Kiani that are glowing away there. And in the distance, oh, behind, hidden behind these blackberry bushes actually is Volterra. There's David having a lovely walk. Yes, um, there's enough. Volterra. I needed a break in the bushes. Yes. Glowing away there. Absolutely going away in that lovely golden light. It's the golden hour and it's about... Oh, 8.30. Eight, it's gone 8.30, I think, now, hasn't it, Danny? You've seen me do this little walk before on my own, before David got here, but I just wanted to bring him down. It's just a sweet little walk. You're literally just on the rim of all the houses, but you kind of feel like you're out in the country a little bit. <laughs> so it's just a sweet way to walk back through into town. It's a nice vista through, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Isn't that pretty? Mm -hmm. 